Hi everyone, uh, this uh, is a two-parter, um, so hopefully you do actually return for the, uh, the second part of this video. We're talking about constructive dismissal and in this video in particular the uh, implied duty of uh, trust and confidence uh, between both employer uh, and employee. Um, now constructive dismissal is uh, a concept that um, people do sometimes struggle with. Firstly. Uh, because it's not a dismissal in the traditional sense. The employer does not terminate the contract of the employee. Um, there are th essentially three elements that an employee needs for a constructive dismissal argument. The first is repudiatory conduct on the part of the employer. So this is something um, serious, uh, maybe one act, maybe a series of acts, which we'll come on to, but which are sufficiently serious to justify the employee resigning. Um, even where there is not an intention to bring the relationship to an end on the part of the employer, uh, what is required is that the employer demonstrates an intention not to be bound by the terms of the contract uh, any longer. And that includes express and implied terms, uh, which we'll come on to. Secondly, the employee must elect to accept that breach and treat the contract as at an end. Uh, so the employee must essentially resign in response to the breach. The difficulty, therefore, in, a, in a, an employee's position where there is a fundamental breach is that, uh, as advisors, we're often unfortunately saying, well, to do anything about this, uh, if you are serious about um, uh, trying to bring a claim and obtain compensation, you actually have to leave your employment, which is a huge stumbling block for, for many employees. Thirdly, and, and crucially as well, the employee must not delay too long in accepting the breach. Um, it's always open to an innocent party to waive the breach and treat the contract, contract as continuing. Um, so in the event, for example, there is a fundamental breach but the employee delays, the employer could argue, well, you stayed, uh, you continue to work, you continue to comply with the contract, you've accepted uh, any breach which may have occurred. So we now move on to discuss um, the implied term of mutual trust and confidence. So aside from um, all of the terms written down in the contract, for example, the employer's duty to pay a certain salary, uh, the employee's duty to, um, uh, to give service for certain hours during the week, um, in, implied terms have also been put into the contract. So this is essentially to fill in any gaps that might not be written down. Um, and these have developed over time. One of the most important in the arena of constructive dismissal is the term of trust and confidence. And this essentially requires that the employer must not, without reasonable and proper cause, conduct itself in a manner calculated and likely to destroy or seriously damage the relationship of trust and confidence between employer and employee. Now that is a mutual term, so it does apply the other way as well, but for the purposes of this video, we're just discussing uh, the employer's duties. Now, despite that wording in the test, if the employer's conduct is likely to destroy trust and confidence, the employee does not also have to show that the employer necessarily intended or calculated um, to destroy it. Now, when we are looking at the legality of a particular course of conduct, and that may be something that is expressly permitted by the contract, such as deciding on whether to uh, issue a discretionary bonus to an employee, or outside of that, whether to demote an employee, whether to um, treat them in a certain way, have a difficult discussion with somebody, um, we must always consider the effect of this implied term of trust and confidence in addition to any other express duties that we have. Uh, it's implied into every single contract of employment, whether it's written down or not. Um, now, again, the employer's motives are not crucial in judging whether uh, the duty has been breached or not. Um, if objectively considered that the, the conduct is likely to cause serious damage to the relationship, a breach of this implied term may have arisen. Now, the tribunal is required to consider the effect of the conduct as a whole, judge reasonably and sensibly, uh, and they have to determine whether or not the employee can reasonably be expected to put up with it. Again, not, not required to show that the employer intended any repudiation of the contract, and it's therefore no defence that uh, an employer honestly believed that what they were doing was right, what they were doing was fair, what they were doing uh, was necessarily reasonable uh, because of this objective test. Now, instead of one big bang, uh, i.e. one significant breach which the employee accepts uh, and brings the contract to an end with, what we also have in law is the last straw doctrine. Um, so this is the idea that a breach of trust and confidence may occur over a series of actions on the part of the employer, which might cumulatively amount to a breach of contract, even though the um, individual incidents which led up to that may not be enough in themselves 
to demonstrate a fundamental breach. So the last straw, the last incident that caused an employee to act in uh, accepting the repudiation of contract um, might not in itself be a breach. Uh, again, it may be a, a small incident which taken together with a course of conduct amounts to a breach of the implied term. And what I would say here is that um, we have experience of a number of employees who essentially keep a diary. Um, so if there is one incident that kicks things off at, at some point, which may be uh, an employee wasn't um, uh, accepted for a promotion in, a, in an internal recruitment drive, um, they may well then start to log incident after incident uh, and at some point in the future may act and say, actually, I have a catalogue of issues which um, on their own may not have amounted to a fundamental breach. But what I'm saying to you now is I've been forced to act. There has been a last straw that's caused me to resign and I'm actually relying on all of these incidents beforehand um, in order to bring my claim. Now, it's not enough for the employee to show that the actions have destroyed or seriously damaged trust and confidence or were calculated to, or likely to do so. Um, the employer must have had no reasonable and proper cause for the actions in question. Um, so it's one thing behaving in a certain way. If there is a reasonable and proper cause though for the uh, actions, uh, this could defeat a claim. In practice, I think this is quite rare. I think once you get to the stage of a tribunal assessing that there has been uh, repudiatory conduct on the part of the employer, uh, it is rare that you can recover that position. Uh, but there is one case of, of Hilton that um, uh, demonstrates uh, potential fairness in a constructive dismissal case. So an employee was um, demoted, um, that was deemed to be a breach of the mutual term of trust and confidence, but the Employment Appeals Tribunal thought the employer did have reasonable and proper cause for that demotion because it genuinely believed the employee to be guilty of dishonesty. I wouldn't rely on um, uh, getting to that stage and, and trying to plead that as the uh, defence to the claim because by that time, again, we have had that repudiatory contract, uh, sorry, repudiatory conduct on the part of the employer. So some brief examples of constructive dismissal cases involving the term of mutual trust and confidence. This may occur where the employee suffers discrimination or uh, harassment, um, bullying, uh, violence um, from uh, other employees and chooses to resign. The employer may make job uh, make changes to the job or to the employee's status, so they may make changes which effectively demote the employee or strip away their authority. Or there may be an express term which is operated unfairly. Um, so if we return to the example of the um, discretionary bonus clause in the contract, yes, you may have wording that allows you to um, decide whether to allow or disallow a bonus, but that is always subject to a duty to, to act fairly in operating that scheme. If we gave every single employee a £1,000 bonus and because we didn't like a particular person, they were the only person who didn't receive it, that could found a constructive dismissal claim, irrespective of the fact that we, on the face of it, do have that express contractual protection. Um, so the purpose of this video is essentially to uh, highlight protection that the employee has, which isn't necessarily obvious from the contract. Um, it highlights that there are implied terms in the employment contract which we must always comply with. And in difficult decisions that we are taking, we must be aware of the risk that an employee may claim that this undermines a very fundamental term of the contract, that being the duty to maintain trust and confidence. In the next part, we'll look at um, when conduct from other individuals within the business could uh, found a claim, and so this is not simply conduct on the part of the employer. But if you do need any advice on the content of this video or any employment support, please do get in touch. The website is chadwicklawrence.co.uk or email employmenthub at chadlaw.co.uk. Thank you.